What's up, everybody? It's Isaac from Alchemy, and this is episode 20 of the Alchemy Devlog. In this episode, I'm going to go over some cool new stuff, like our new Alchemy Enhanced Audio Slider. We officially have an Alchemy Enhanced title out on the marketplace now, and more of those coming to you Kickstarter backers very soon. Uh, we've also got some new watcher mode features, some safety tools for game masters who choose to play with watcher mode enabled. I'll also take some time to go through what we have coming up next, what the team is working on currently, and I've got a load of questions to go through since last time, so we'll dive into those as well. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the Alchemy Enhanced Audio first up. So if you haven't seen it already, there's um, the Ryoko's Guide to the Yokai Realms is live on Kickstarter right now. We are uh, close partners with these folks. They make great stuff. You can get the free adventure from them, the uh, Ascendant Cascade from our marketplace. That's a free preview of the Ryoko's Guide right here. Go ahead and grab that and it comes with a free PDF of their preview. And um, you can launch a quick start of this game on Alchemy to check out the cool new Alchemy enhanced audio features. So let's launch one of these games now. I'm gonna go ahead and throw my headphones on so I can listen along with you. So, popping open the audio settings for this game, we have this cool triangular slider to change the music mix dynamically during your game. So as the GM, you can adjust this and the mix will change to set the mood for everybody in the game. They'll hear exactly what you're hearing at the exact same time that you're changing it. So moving this around to the different points, you kind of are getting a different mix of the music with a different mood, more intense or more calm or somewhere in between, kind of mixing everything together. And players, of course, will still be able to adjust the volume level on their end. They'll see a slider uh, for the music level, and if there's an ambient sound bed, they can control that volume level independently as well. So this will be kind of a hallmark of any Alchemy Enhanced title. We've talked about that a lot in the Kickstarter. Alchemy Enhanced this, Alchemy Enhanced that. Here's one of the main ways that Alchemy Enhanced games will differ, is this dynamic audio slider. So, like I said, this is a free adventure on the marketplace. Go ahead and grab it and try this out. We have more titles coming to you soon. If you're a Kickstarter backer, we have Merkborg Enhanced and Pirateborg Enhanced and a bunch of other great stuff coming your way with these sorts of features, um, as well as all the motion assets that we're developing for Alchemy Enhanced titles in particular. So go ahead and grab this one, give it a try, and let us know what you think. So... Other than that, we've rolled out some new safety features for games that have watchers enabled. So let's take a look at this pirate board game. In here, I have watcher chat enabled. As you can see, there's a chat tab up here and a watchers tab here. I'm gonna go ahead and jump onto my test account here and take a look at this game live on the platform. So here it is, Pirate Borg from the devlog user. And I've already banned this user. So they get an access denied message. If I head back over to this user account here and edit the game, you'll see in the safety tab at the bottom, there's a new section for banned watchers. And I've banned this test account that just tried to join the game. Backing up a step, I'll remove them from the ban list save that and then jump back over to their account. And if I try to join the game now, I can get in and I can send messages to the watcher chat. So I've already said hello earlier. I'm going to say yo ho as a watcher. And then over here on the GM side again, we see we've got this watcher account um, here watching the game. If I right click and choose ban, I can kick him out of the game again. So going back over, I've been kicked out of the game and access is denied. Just a nice little safety feature for those of you who have watchers enabled for your games. You can now keep people from joining if they're, uh, you know, trolls or whatever. So kind of an important uh, safety feature for you all. And hopefully you all get some, well, 
I was going to say hopefully you get good use out of it, but hopefully you don't have to use it at all. But it's there if you do. Let's take a look at the roadmap. What is the team working on now? This week's a little bit lighter on things that we've deployed. There's some bug fixes and some other smaller changes, but for the big features, uh, we've got a lot of stuff upcoming and in flight. So one of the biggest things, I don't need my headphones anymore. Let's get rid of these. One of the biggest things is uh, playable NPCs. We need a way to do, you know, um, companions and the like. So that's in progress right now. It's been in progress for a little while and uh, we'll be bringing that to you very soon. I'm hoping by the next devlog, this feature will be live. Uh, we also have account email features. These keep getting bumped down a little bit in priority because there's more important stuff to do. Streamer mode is going to break ground very soon. Uh, we should have some news on that by the next devlog for sure. And perhaps most exciting to you all is um, that we're officially working on rulers for tactical mode now as well. Um, I We should have something by next devlog on that. I'll at least have something to show if it's not already live. I can, I can say that much. We haven't started on Fog of War um, in earnest yet, It's but it's coming up very soon. And then we have two sort of um, last minute additions to our V1 roadmap. Um, one of them is actions in universe. So as we're starting to build out all of these uh, systems, we're finding, much like many of you are, that we use some of the same actions in different places. Uh, and we thought it would be really nice to have a reusable actions repository, if you will. So we're bringing the actions to universe. You'll be able to define actions at the universe level and pull those into your NPCs and your pre-mades instead of having to recreate the same thing over and over again. Um, including pulling in those actions onto items. Uh, and we'll also have a way for you to say that a certain action is a default NPC action. So anytime you create an NPC in that universe, they'll get that action by default, um, as well as the same for players and for GMs as well. So you can have a default set of game master actions for your custom game system or for your universe, so that whenever you start a game in that system, you'll get those GM actions as well. Um, so that's in progress right now. Um, we're hoping to have that out before the next devlog. Uh, the last thing on the new list is a sound action. So we have heard you ask for um, soundboards and the like many times over the over the uh, the time that we've been asking people for opinions about alchemy. Uh, and we are finally breaking ground on that with a new action type that you can have a sound attached to. And when you run that action, it's going to play the sound. Um, so you could use this as a game master to build out a sound soundboard of different sounds to play during your game or attach it to, uh, you know, a battle axe swing or however you'd like to use it. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty powerful and pretty flexible way to do things on the platform. And I'm really excited to roll that out there. Next up, we've been hard at work on game systems. Of course, we have a lot of them that we want to support for the V1 release. Um, we are done with Pirate Borg, and those of you who have already purchased it on the marketplace are enjoying that. Um, we are officially done with Merc Borg now as well. We have the implementation complete. We're just waiting on some of those alchemy enhanced assets to roll out Merc Borg. That should be coming out in the next wave, which I think is going to be uh, in the end of September. The last week of September, we'll be rolling out wave two of Kickstarter rewards, which will include Merc Borg alchemy enhanced. We are also uh, in the middle of implementing Vast Grim, which is a Merc Borg compatible game. Uh, this one's moving along very quickly, and we're almost done with that. And next up after that is Vasin, and we'll be breaking ground on Year Zero Engine games, starting with Vasin. Uh, and I'm really excited to see uh, what all we bring to the platform to support that sort of different system of uh, Year Zero Engine. That about wraps things up for where we're at on our roadmap. As always, this is available in the app under the little beaker in the sidebar. You can bring this up, take a look at it anytime. We've also got our content roadmap over here in this uh, content tab as well. So take a look at that if you're curious what, um, what things may be coming to the marketplace uh, soon. Of course, we don't have dates on much of this stuff because you know we're, we're, um, we're working on things. All right, let's take a look at the Q&A that you all have sent in since last time. 
going to jump into my handy devlogs uh, universe and pull up devlog Q&A for episode 20. Homebrew. So Eli asks, mainly for 5e, will there be a homebrew system or a way to import or save items, NPCs, subclasses, etc.? Not as robust as the import beyond character sheet, but something more streamlined than hand typing or making every piece of content by hand. I really enjoy Alchemy's system is flexible enough to essentially fit anything, but for this game system, which requires a lot of crunch and paperwork, I'm hoping there will be something along the lines of a community for homebrew or a sort of save area where custom things can be popped into different universes, not just the one it was made in. Kind of a lot to break down here, but I think the gist of it is we, we want to enable cross-universe content sharing. We definitely hear that a lot. Um, and we've talked about it before on the Discord. One of the main problems with it, or one of the challenges that we face with it, is making sure that we don't um, accidentally enable content sharing for stuff that hasn't been purchased. And there are solutions to this. We've definitely heard a few good solutions um, come up, and we've thought of our own good solutions for that as well. Um, and I think that we can get there. But yeah, we definitely hear you that there's things like class features that you want to be able to pull in across different universes. Um, and I don't have an answer for when we'll have good um, solutions for that. I think that the upcoming actions that I mentioned earlier will help some of these things. But for text-based features and things of that nature, um, that may not be the right fit. But definitely something that we'll bring to the team and chew on a little bit and see what we can bring uh, in a kind of a quality of life update post version one soundboard oh hey i recognize this name mr dave uh great youtube videos by the way mr dave uh soundboard i like to feed sounds slash music etc through my soundboard into my game this gives me great flexibility to play various sounds slash music within the current scene which is limited in its current state it's also easier for me to manage and control it on my end currently i do this by choosing my soundboard as my mic input when I play music, it tends to go in and out in terms of volume. Not 100% sure, but I assume this is likely due to noise canceling on our end. Could you give us the ability to turn off that noise canceling? Um, yeah, that's like a ducking. Um, this is a common feature in Zoom, Teams, etc. Music musician mode or true sound. Hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, so I think probably that's that's a ducking thing that's happening at your operating system level. I'm not 100% sure that that's truly where, where it's happening, but I will say that the best solution to this is going to be our sound action type uh, because you'll be able to move those sounds out of your soundboard app and into actions in Alchemy uh, and play those into the same mix as everything else, and you shouldn't have any sort of in and outs in terms of the volume there. So once those sound actions roll out, Give that a try, and I think it's going to be pretty awesome. All right, S effects from Scarlet. Hello, Alchemy team. I adore the various effects that I've gotten from the platform to add to scenes, but I was wondering if layering effects was something that could ever be possible in the future. So say a green fog with fireflies and so on. I often find changing through single effects moment to moment, depending on the RP my players go through. Uh, this is a cool idea. Um, one of the issues with our current uh, motion overlays and motion effects is that they're pretty resource intensive, um, but we have a fix for that coming out very soon. Um, and after we have that in place, I could see us potentially post version one, rolling out some, uh, some way to layer those effects, combine more than one of them together. Um, it's certainly technically possible, so I think that could be a pretty cool way to get a little more mileage about uh, mileage out of those effects. So thank you for the suggestion. Uh, Realm Master K has a string of questions here. Let's start with this one. Will there be a way to be able to access NPCs and monsters from monster slash creature books and custom systems? Monsters and NPCs in the 5e SRD, the ability to drag into tactical mode as a token in custom games especially. Yeah, so there's kind of two facets to this. Um, the first is uh, the ability to access things across universes, um, which is something we definitely plan to enable, um, as well as across game system boundaries. Uh, so the ability to bring a 5e monster into a custom game. Um, I don't know if we will enable that anytime soon. We're definitely going to have things like assets, um, the ability to pull an asset from a universe that's not the same game system that you're currently in. Uh, but 
I, I don't know specifically about like pulling in a monster from the 5e SRD into a custom game. Um, and I'm talking specifically custom game system game, uh, just because of the, the differences in how mechanically those two monsters or that monster works in those two different systems. Um, but yeah, I think that we can try to find an overlap in those things and make that, make that at least partially possible. So we'll keep that in mind as we're, as we're starting to open up the boundaries across the universes. Prompt for dice roll. Another one from Realm Master K. Will there be a way to prompt for a dice roll when performing actions in custom systems? Instead of alchemy rolling, my players prefer rolling their own dice. Ditto for other supported systems. Maybe a toggle to prompt for dice rolls that can then be entered. Yeah, so um, we actually built a feature similar to this in really, really early alpha versions where the GM could request rolls, um, which I thought was really cool. We've since removed that. We'll probably bring it back eventually. Um, in fact, you can kind of see it today if you're in a game and a 5e game that has a saving throw. Um, there's kind of a card in the journal to make that saving throw just by clicking on it. Um, that's sort of the the only remnant of, of the, the old feature that I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, we do plan to allow manual dice rolls, um, enter your own dice roll. Uh, and sort of part of that is integrating with um, Bluetooth dice, things like Pixels dice or Go dice. Uh, we need to be able to, to take a die roll from somewhere else and feed it into Alchemy. Um, so the first step there is grab a manual roll. Um, so yeah, we definitely have this in mind. It's not a V1 feature, but we'll be working on this soon after v1 launches um okay another one from realm master k will assets and scenes from purchased content be available in custom system games for example i purchased all the 5e and pathfinder content in a different vtt but i can't access any of it in my custom system games that was a deal breaker for me i pledged for the backers box in alchemy v1 kickstarter and previously purchased a founders box thank you realm master k really appreciate the support also back to Lord Vithera at the limited book package level. Holy moly, you got all the good stuff. Uh, that will give me a lot of content. You're right. I'd like to have access to at least some of that in my custom games. Okay, so this touches on the same, uh, the same sort of thing as earlier. The ability to bring assets from one universe into your game, even if it's not the same game system or rule system. Yes. Um, as I as I say here on screen, absolutely, we are working on a way to at least bring assets from one universe into your game, whether or not the game system matches. So we will have that, um, and we have that uh, on the roadmap for for V one. Um, okay, another one. Is there a way to share an item to the journal that only shows the image and not the text description? Useful if the item is not yet attuned to by the players. We do not have this right now. Um, one thing you could do is share just the item image to the journal, um, but you would need to have the image separated out as an asset rather than an actual image. So um, that would be one solution. I do like the idea. Uh, I think it'd be a neat enhancement to have sort of a, like an obscured send to journal function. I like that idea. So we'll bring that in and, and kind of um, discuss that. And maybe we can come up with a good implementation to, to send something private like that. Because I do like the ability to keep player knowledge and, you know, character knowledge separate. And sometimes you don't even want the players to know about something. I like that idea. Um, I Yeah, I think we'll we'll consider that. Private messages. Uh, can private messages be sent to one player, either in the journal or a private chat feature? Same question for multiple, but not all players. Um, so right now we have a whisper function. You can go to the party panel, right click on who you'd like to whisper, and then click on whisper. And that will drop a command into your um, journal chat where you can send a private message just to that player. Uh, we don't have the ability to send more than just text that way. You can't like whisper an item to them. At least I don't think. Pretty sure that doesn't work. Um, but that would be a great thing to enhance our whisper functionality with. Um, so yeah, you can whisper text to a player right now, but not to a group. Uh, and I don't believe you can include anything in the whisper besides just text. Ryoko's Guide Free Adventure. Hey there, started looking at the Ryoko's free adventure, The Ascendant Cascade. 
We all saw that one here. It is pretty sweet. I love all the articles and was excited to have a test run with my group. When I ran the quick start, I noticed that I wasn't able to access the other articles like the creatures and the introduction, which was important for me to start the session. I only had the first and the second scene. I know there's a search button with the magnifying glass, but I couldn't remember the names of the articles and had to go back to the content universe several times to get that information. When I search to add a new scene, it pulls up all the scenes and I can filter that way by typing in the search bar or switching to the universe in the right of the search bar. Is it possible to do the same for the search feature when looking for articles and items to be able to see all the available articles and assets immediately and then narrow it down as I type or change the filtered universe? Andrew. Uh, there's not currently, but that is certainly a, a good improvement for um, our in-game universe search. Um, we kind of have that finalized for V1 right now, but we can come back around and improve it for sure. Um, so we'll, we'll bring this into the team and consider ways that we can make it easier to discover your, um, your connected articles inside of a game without having to search for them by name. Uh, okay, last up, Unsoupable. What a great username. Will there be a way to customize dice faces for custom games? i.e. in the one ring, 2e, which is probably never coming to alchemy due to IP, as was discussed, the 11 and 12 faces on a d12 are replaced with special symbols to indicate crit, fail, successes, and it would make gameplay much easier if I'd, if it would be possible to add your own vectors or at least letters to replace certain die faces. Um, yeah, so this is likely to happen as we move into new game systems. Um, we certainly have uh, a few where it would be helpful to be able to have different faces on the dice. Um, we need to do something there. Uh, I, I don't know for sure if it's going to be included in our systems for V1, but we definitely agree with you that this would be helpful for, um, for uh, the One Ring and for other game systems where you have symbols on your dice. So we will be keeping this in mind for sure. The last thing I would note there is when we do bring that to the platform, um, our sort of core philosophy is to never, never build tools just for ourselves, for building out game systems. We try to give you access to the same tools that we're using when we build things like Merc Borg, um, for the most part. Right? We try to build reusable tools and systems that we can then give to you. Like Universe is a great example. Um, Universe was born out of our need to provide a way to get to some of the lore of Athera, the Lost Druid content, um, in a in kind of a, a reusable way. We need to organize articles, and so the Universe articles was born out of that. Uh, and it's kind of evolved into its current state of this great world-building tool. Um, that's the same world building tool that we use to build uh, Ryoko's Guide, for example, the the articles and the free adventure that's up there for that. Um, that's all built with uh, just universe tools. So our, our philosophy there is to always give those tools to you um, as much as possible to give you the power to do the cool things that we do. So once dice faces are available for us, they will be available for you too. Uh, okay, that wraps up Q&A for this week. Thank you for all the questions, everyone, and keep them coming. All right, that's it for this episode of the Devlog, sort of a rapid fire look at where we're headed and a lot of Q&A. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, head on down below, hit that like button, subscribe for future updates. We put these out every two weeks, um, and we're going to have more video content coming to you soon. So be sure to subscribe to get that stuff straight into your notification stack that's probably overloaded, much like mine. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Let's go play some games.